Finland has become the 31st member of the NATO Security Alliance, marking a major shift in the security landscape in northeastern Europe, further doubling the length of member states that borders with Russia. The question is, what is the significance of Finland joining NATO and what kind of ramifications will it have on the ongoing war in Ukraine? To answer all of this and much more, we are now being joined by Tiebo Tevianen, Professor of World Politics from the University of Helsinki. Thank you so much for joining us and beyond, Professor. Wonderful to be here. Right now, for starters, Finland has become the 31st member of the NATO Security Alliance. How important is this step? Well, for Finland, uh, moods changed last year drastically after Russia's war of aggression started. So here in Finland, most people thought until February last year that it doesn't make sense to join the alliance now. But um, now it's agreed that with the very long border with Russia and Russia being uh, an aggressive country, uh, then uh, having the security brought by the fifth article of NATO and the nuclear umbrella is something that helps protect Finland from Russia. That's the main rationale from Finland. For NATO, of course, it strengthens the alliance a little bit. Right, Professor, like you mentioned that uh, with Finland joining NATO, NATO's border with Russia has been doubled. My question to you is that what kind of uh, ramifications and implications will it have on the ongoing war in Ukraine and what kind of changes can be expected along the frontier? I don't think it has too many uh, ramifications or consequences for the war in Ukraine right now. Uh, for NATO, on the one hand, it means there's more border with Russia. For Russia, it means Russia feels a little bit less secure because NATO is surrounding it from uh, more sides now. Uh, so in that case, it can also mean heightened uh, security situation in Europe in a longer term. This is what Russia claims. Uh, in Finland, people are mostly thinking about what it means for security of Finland vis-a-vis -vis Russia, where my, there's almost a consensus that it's good for security of Finland in most cases. In case of a major war like nuclear war, it might be a bad thing for Finland to be a frontline country, though. Right, Professor, just to add to that, we do know that Russia's invasion of Ukraine prompted Finland's application to join the alliance. But help us understand, how will Finland be an asset to the alliance? Well, Finland is a small country, so uh, the significance is not so huge. But compared to the size, Finland's army is fairly strong and big. So that's one thing. If Sweden joins together, there are two new countries, then um, some would say that vis-a-vis -vis more authoritarian states like Turkey within NATO, Finland and Sweden would bring more democracy-oriented uh, kind of uh, things to NATO. But it remains to be seen. It's symbolically important for NATO also because Putin was saying there should be no NATO expansion. And one reason for war in Ukraine was to oppose NATO expansion. And that's what he got in Finland. Right. Just to add to that, Finland's accession is clearly a snap for Russia's Vladimir Putin. And uh, like you mentioned, that he was absolutely against Finland joining NATO. I want to ask you and seek your perspective as to what kind of reaction can be expected out of the Kremlin at the moment. Well, um, I don't think there's necessarily a big uh, short-term um, reaction. Of course, in the long term, now that Finland is in NATO, it will be natural that Russia has some new military installations near the border now that it's a NATO border. Uh, in terms of threats now, uh, Russia is very busy in Ukraine. And furthermore, Russia's conventional uh, use of forces has come out as not so efficient as many thought. So people in Finland are not so afraid of any kind of invasion or something like that. But of course, there are long term threats and there might be things like cyber attacks and other other stuff. There was yesterday there was a denial of service attack against Parliament of Finland. Many think it came from Russia. Right, Professor. Also, how are people in Finland reacting to the accession? Are they happy? 
Well, Finnish people are quite muted in their expressions, so, you know, it's not like if it was uh, Brazil winning <laughs> the World Cup and everybody going crazy. Uh, I know some people open bottles of champagne and uh, mostly people were quite tranquil and muted. Most people were mostly happy, some have their worries, majority supports NATO membership, but there are many people who think that NATO is not really a good thing. Uh, but Putin left us no chance, so we joined NATO, but we don't celebrate NATO. That's the opinion of many people also. Right. Also, NATO has not only admitted Finland at the moment, but is also planning to further support Ukraine in the ongoing war. Um, help us understand that is this one of the biggest challenges that NATO has faced in recent years? Well, certainly, because NATO was formed as uh, with one of the main reasons being to defend Europe, Western Europe, from attack from Russia. And now many see that this is one of the most crucial moments when there's a Russian aggression sort of westward. So, um, but of course, United States has it seems tried to avoid direct confrontation between United States and NATO and Russia in fear of escalation. So we can see that NATO has not gone all in the Ukrainian war also to avoid escalation of war with Russia, which would could be catastrophic. Right. Also, like Finland has become the 31st member of uh, the NATO alliance. What are the hiccups or the blocks that are obstructing Sweden's accession to the alliance at the moment? At the moment, they are called Turkey and Hungary, <laughs> mostly Turkey. Um, Turkish president famously blocked Finland's and Sweden's accession uh, for several months. Then uh, recently he decided to let Finland in to ratify Finnish application. Differences between Finland and Sweden are that Sweden has a much larger population of migrants in general and migrants from Turkey and, for example, Kurdish people and Kurdish refugees. So Turkey has claimed that there's too much activism, pro-Kurdish and pro-human rights activism around Turkey in Sweden. And, and one recent difference was also that there was Quran burning in Sweden. Sweden's laws allow for freedom of expression. So you burn a religious book and that's fine in criminal law sense, whereas Finland has blasphemy laws. So in Finland, you couldn't burn a Quran without uh, having to go to the courts. So uh, Turkey was also referring to this difference like Quran burning uh, Sweden cannot enter NATO was one of the arguments. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us in Vion at this hour and sharing your insights on this. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.